Hello, my name is Justin Krieger. Uh, I'm a certified financial planner and uh, partner and owner at Klein First, and uh, welcome to this month's Lunch and Learn presentation. Uh, this month, we're going over the true holistic planning process. Um, this is part of our monthly Lunch and Learn series. Every third Wednesday of the month, uh, we offer the educational uh, presentations. Uh, they're all about an hour long, and we cover different uh, uh, financial topics for education for our clients, and uh, uh, just people in the community are welcome to attend. So uh, again, this month we're going over True Holistic, and uh, we'll get started. Before I start on our topic today, just give you updates on what's happening with my family this summer. Um, uh, my wife and I had a good time this spring at a a, an adult prom event on the left there. Uh, my wife is off to school teaching high school part-time um, at Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School. She's having a great time teaching psychology and English. Uh, my little guy on the top there, Zev, uh, he is two and a half years old, uh, but he thinks he's five or six years old when he's wrestling with his brothers, so he's really a fun kid. Uh, my son there, uh, you can see looking over the baseball field, he's been baseball crazy this year. Isaiah's nine going into third grade. Uh, he loves playing baseball. And you can see one of our family vacations this summer, we went to Canada on a fishing trip to a camp. Uh, also had a great time on the beach there, enjoying the lake. <clears throat> see a couple of fish here. Asher on the upper right had a nice fish that I helped him with. <clears throat> That's a 21 and a half inch walleye. <clears throat> And then on the bottom right, Isaiah had his personal bass, 22 and a quarter inch that he caught all by himself. Uh, my daughter, Michaela, on the upper right, that was at Beats for Heartbeats. I know some of our clients were there. Uh, this is a fir the first annual event. It's a Christian pro-life um, event that we put on, and that's Rhett Walker of the Rhett Walker Band. He was the headline band. Um, so we had a great time supporting that. The bottom there, my daughter's hanging out with her great-grandma. My kids have been lucky enough to know three or four of their great grandparents um, and we had a grandfather and a grandmother pass away but this is the last surviving great grandma and my daughter's had a good time uh, keeping her company uh, this summer then in the upper middle you can see a couple ninjas there at their birthday party um, so that's asher and chase chase is our new foster child we had a little two-year-old girl as a foster child for about a year and uh, Chase is with us now. He's going to kindergarten. Um, so we're happy to, besides our own four kids, we're happy to um, support and uh, help take care of some kids who need a home. So we don't know how long he's going to be with us, but we're happy to have him in our home when we can. So the true holistic planning process, um, as a reminder, Client First is a registered investment advisor with the state of Wisconsin. We act as a fiduciary for our clients, which means we're required to act in your best interest. We're not just selling you a product when we're doing planning. So as you're going into retirement, you may be asking yourself several different questions. Um, these are just 49 questions I came up uh, on a quick brainstorm. Uh, do you have enough money for retirement? Uh, is the stock market going to crash again? Um, what type of tax situation are you in? Should you use Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs? How much life insurance do I need? Um, uh, what, how do I plan for Medicare? What type of Medicare supplement or Advantage plan should I have? Uh, is my homeowner's insurance coverage and my umbrella coverage correct? What type of estate documents do I need? What's TOD and POD? How does this all work together? So I did a similar presentation to this last year. Um, there's going to be an attached document with the email and the link to our presentation. Uh, the title of that is called the Client First True Holistic Scorecard. So we're going to go through all these different areas of planning. So you can see the seven different professionals you would need to help you plan. Uh, those being a financial planner, investment advisor, a tax professional, a life insurance agent, health insurance agent, auto home insurance agent, and a state planning attorney. So we're going to go through all these different areas of planning, and then we're going to pause after each one and do a self-assessment. 
kind of score yourself and see where you're at with things. Uh, this is going to help if you're a client. It'll help me at our annual review. Um, if you're new to us, it's a great tool for you to reference in your initial consultation with us or if you're doing planning on your own. Uh, it'll be a great um, opportunity um, for you to recognize which areas really need um, your attention. So you may be like the person on the right there where you just have all these things, um, all these questions in your head. Um, so many times this is what delays people from retiring because they just have all these different things they want to, uh, they feel they need to do. So we're here with our true holistic process to um, de-stress you and help break it down into, um, you know, bite-sized chunks. Our true holistic process um, breaks this down category by category, but we help uh, organize the whole process for you. So we break this into four basic planning steps. Step one is basically me getting to know or one of our planners getting to know your situation um, and becoming familiar and figuring what type of planning you need to do and then you getting more information about the services we offer. Uh, then if you decide to go forward in the process, step two and step three are what I call the initial planning phase. Step two is basically gathering more detailed information about your situation. Uh, and step three is providing um, recommendations and planning strategies. And then step four is ongoing maintenance of the plan on a year to year basis. Normally we meet with our clients twice a year, once at tax time and once later in the year to do a complete review. So this process is going to help you tackle all those 49 questions. Uh, it's going to address some of your largest costs, those being inflation, health care, and taxes. And it's going to include this initial planning phase and the uh, annual um, strategy meeting uh, so that we can maintain the plan. All right, this is kind of our first time out for your self-assessment. Um, so this is kind of an initial pulse, if you will. So if you have a well-coordinated team of, do you have a well-coordinated team of professionals? Uh, give yourself a one through three. Um, if you don't have a team, um, but you sh you're sure you can figure it out on your own, but you think you might need some help, give yourself a four through six. If you get some help here and there from different professionals, but you have some gaps, give yourself a seven through nine. If you have an accountant, an advisor, an attorney, but they're not really coordinating things together, and give yourself a 10 through 12 if you have a full financial tax and estate plan and you have a well-coordinated team. So again, refer to your client first true holistic scorecard um, and give yourself a, a self-assessment. Um, if you need that printed off or any of the slides printed off, feel free to contact our office, but it will be an attachment on the email um, that this presentation was linked in. So I'll give you about 20 seconds to complete that. All right, now that we've kind of taken your initial pulse, we're going to go through category by category and kind of professional by professional and what areas they'd help you with. So a financial planner is going to help you with, with budget and debt analysis, retirement income planning, Social Security analysis, pension analysis, bucket planning, and family estate organizing. So retirement income planning is going to involve budget and debt analysis. Um, everyone's budget and lifestyle is unique. Um, we don't want to use rules of thumb, such as you need 60 or 80% of your pre-retirement income in retirement. We want it based on your actual expenses. Social Security and pension analysis. Married couples can claim Social Security about 81 different ways. Uh, we want to do an analysis of your pension options. Those might include monthly payments, a lump sum payments, survivorship option, a single life option. So these are very important if you do have a pension. If you don't and you just have Social Security like many people, then Social Security becomes very important. When we put together detailed retirement projections, we overbuild your plan and we hit them with a hammer and try to make them break. What do I mean by that? We use your actual expenses 
and we use a pre-retirement rate of return of 6% and a after retirement or post retirement rate of return of four. Um, and we use a variable returns, which means we average four, um, but it's gonna vary from year to year, which is more like reality. We're gonna inflate those expenses at 3%, but we're only gonna increase your social security by 1%. Historically, the social security is kept up with the inflation, but we wanna be conservative. We also, um, we realize many of you right now are in the 12 and 22% tax brackets, but we are going to conservatively plan um, for you to go back to the 15 and 25 percent federal brackets to be conservative. Uh, a retirement income plan, it's not just a huge spreadsheet of unrealistic expectations. Here I just threw this out as an example to make a point. Uh, this financial plan I found online, uh, they had 8 percent rate of return, not realistic, and it was 8 percent every year. That doesn't happen in reality. Um, so it's not just several pages of spreadsheets. It takes work and time to input the right data and have realistic expectations. Uh, the bucket plan is what we use to visually organize your money based on time horizon. What, what I mean by that is when you're going to use the money. So you have now money um, that's set aside for emergencies and planned expenses. We don't take any risk with that money. Um, it's in the bank, safe. Soon money is money you're using for current monthly income, and later money is money you're not planning on using for five or ten years. Everyone's bucket plan is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you may be on the top bucket plan here, uh, where you live off just your Social Security. You don't really plan on using much of your money, so your later bucket is much larger. On the bottom there, maybe you're delaying your Social Security till a, a later age, such as age 70, and you need a large amount in your soon bucket to bridge the income. So everyone's plan is a little unique here. This is not quite a plan. So this is where I see most people coming in before they do a plan. So they have now money set aside in the bank, and then all the retirement funds are just kind of lumped into this later bucket. But they haven't taken any time to plan or figure out when they might need to use the money. And this leads to more anxiety as you have fluctuations in investments and volatility. All right, let's take a little time out for you to do a self-assessment. Uh, on your um, true holistic scorecard, so are your assets uh, segmented based on time and purpose? Give yourself a one through three. If you've been sold various financial products but you don't really understand them, or their risk involved. Give yourself a four through six. If you don't really know how much risk you're taking with your investments um, or which accounts to draw from. Give yourself a seven through nine if you have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, but don't know how market risk or interest rate risk will affect you. And finally, give yourself a 10 through 12 if your assets are fully segmented, organized, um, into different buckets according to time horizon and the purpose of the money. Give you about 20 seconds to complete that assessment. All right, the family estate organizer. This is where we organize your plan. In your documents, this is anywhere from bank accounts to retirement accounts to estate documents. This is a living, breathing document we create for you. You take home at the end of the planning process, and then you maintain it um, periodically. This is important to have everything organized and together so that if someone needs to step in, power of attorney, executor, etc., they have everything organized and in one spot. All right, take a little self ex um, self-assessment time. I have a documented financial plan that's fully understood. So give yourself a one through three. If you have no plan and I don't really know how to get started, steps four through six. If you definitely know a plan is important but don't have one in place, give yourself a seven through nine. If you have a plan but you don't fully understand it, you're hoping your advisor does. 
and finally give yourself a 10 through 12. If you have a plan, it's completely documented and fully, and you under fully understand how it works. Give yourself about 20 seconds to finish that assessment. Okay, you will need an investment advisor. Um, the investment advisor is going to help you with navigating market risk, emotional investing, the flaw of averages, interest rate risk, and the sequence of returns risk. So market risk, we know the market goes up and down. It's very confusing based on what the media tells us. So here's a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm sure you've heard them talk about making all-time highs recently this year. But it's confusing to you because if you look at this chart, the Dow Jones has actually gone nowhere in the last 18 months. So it's important to know how this risk affects your portfolio. <clears throat> emotional investing. So you can see the, the different levels of emotion, hopeful, confident, euphoric, uh, defeated, cautious, positive, confident, thrilled, surprised. So these are not a good thing um, in relation to your investments. You shouldn't involve emotions in your investment strategy. Um, you need a way to protect yourself from your emotions when you're making investment decisions. You can see how well the average investor navigates this, where the average of stocks over the long term is over 7%, bonds are about 5 well, the average investor did just over 2%. The flaw of averages, this is one that probably many of you are not familiar with. So from the last slide and this slide, you know, the average market return going back to 1928 is about 7.4%. So you'll always hear in the media that uh, you should average about 7%. That's what the markets are, are uh, doing. This is like uh, me telling you if you step outside, you should expect it to be 48 degrees because that's the average temperature in Wisconsin. You can actually see from this bar graph, and you know, living in Wisconsin, that you could, if it's summertime, it might be a nice, humid 80 or 85. If it's winter, it might be negative 20. So this bar chart for the market returns actually shows the same thing. So the orange bar there actually shows about 5% of the time. the market returns between 5 and 10% annually. So it's actually the least likely scenario that it's going to fall close to 7% annual rate of return. This is very counterintuitive because the, the media is always talking about 7% rate of return when it's actually the least likely case in your account on an annual basis. So it's important for you to know that. Our adaptive system um, is one of the tools we use um, this is our solution in the investment management space uh, to combat some of these um, issues and market risk. So the adaptive system, um, I'm going to go through the basics here, not trying to uh, steal uh, Dave's thunder. Um, one of the things we do here is we have a team of professionals built um, to support your, um, your planning, your strategy, and uh, your financial well-being. Uh, David Zarling is our main um, his main focus is the investment management here. Um, he does our lunch and learn presentations uh, the first week of every new quarter. So January, April, uh, July, and October. I'm just giving you a brief overview. If you have more interest in this area, you can definitely contact him or come to one of those lunch and learns or uh, get our recording for that month. So the adaptive system, um, I'm going to summarize here is going to identify risk versus reward, uh, invest with the direction of the trend of the market, manage risk using weight of evidence and position sizing. Uh, it's going to stay uh, disciplined to the system and use price. Um, and the adaptive system has three outcomes. It has big wins, small wins, and small losses. Notice it is missing... Uh, large losses. So that's very important um, when we go through some of the next um, sequences. It might seem, you know, 
kind of obvious that big avoiding big losses is going to help you. I'm going to show you when you're in retirement taking money out. When we look at the sequence of return risk, it's even more important than you think. So price and trend. Um, so we're going to invest with the trend of the market. This is just a chart of the S&P 500 from about 2000 and 2019. And it shows you periods where we would have been in the market and out of the market. Um, the red arrows meaning when we would have been out of the market. Green arrows when we would have been in the market. So we want to identify these times when it's um, too high of risk to be involved in the stock market. So a summary, market risk, realities, and solutions. So market volatility is going to continue. The bull markets aren't going to last forever. There's always a risk of downturn. Uh, your soon and later money may be in danger. Um, our adaptive um, investment management system protects in large downtrends and aims to outperform the S&P in uptrends. And adaptive is acting as that emotional bodyguard between you and uncertain markets. Interest rate risk, this is one uh, most people are familiar with market risk. Uh, interest rate risk, not quite as well known. <clears throat> so interest rates have been in this 35-year downtrend. Uh, we may be breaking out of this downtrend, and I'll show you how that might affect you. So as interest rates rise, bond prices fall. Uh, so that's their inverse relationship. So you can see during these periods um, of owning a bond for 10 years, so these are 10-year periods, uh, 1945 through 1954, all the way up to 1972 to 81. So these were um, all periods of rising interest rates. The average loss of principal during this time on a $100,000 investment was 24000 The worst case scenario was a $42,000 loss. So a lot of people, since we've been in the interest rate environment we have, they aren't aware that you can lose money on your bond portfolio in the long run. Um, so this was a very long time where you had negative performance in a bond portfolio. Here's, we had a little bit of interest rate um, increase in 2018. Um, and here's some examples of how that affects you. Uh, Bond funds are potentially more dangerous for you. Um, uh, individual bonds on the left there, they have a maturity and a full par price. Bond funds are always rolling their portfolio, so they have no maturity date, no return of par. They could have liquidity issues, and they're required to hold on to bonds by their mandate. So in 2018, we've seen some of the largest bond mutual funds here. Um, in their performance. So the Vanguard um, total bond market index, net of um, fees, um, dividends, distributions, capital gains uh, lost about 0.03%. PIMCO total return fund lost about 0.26%. And the JP Morgan core bond fund lost about 0.06%. This came during the same time the S&P 500 lost about 6%. So we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but the idea is the older you get, the more bonds you should have because they're going to protect you or insulate you from the market drawdowns. This is not always the case. Interest rate um, realities, risks, and solutions. So interest rate risks, rates may be breaking out of a 35-year downtrend. When rates rise, bond prices are going to drop. Bond funds are not safe from the decline. Traditional modern portfolio theory um, just says own more bonds the older you get, regardless of the interest rate environment. <clears throat> this could be risky for you. Our, we're going to use the adaptive system to navigate the interest rate um, environment and how you're allocated to bonds. And your soon bucket and fixed income investments need to be chosen uh, carefully, taking into consideration interest rate, principal, and market risk. Next risk we're talking about is sequence of returns risk. So this is a very kind of scientific um, output. 
that's supposed to help try to explain the sequence of returned risk. I put this up here to, again, make a point. I don't think most people um, uh, get much out of this. It doesn't make them feel very good because uh, they're not sure one of the, which one of the squiggly lines is going to be their portfolio. Um, so I like to explain it another way. So during the, we're going to do two examples here, both with the same initial deposit, both with the same average return. So first one, $100,000 deposit, 6% average rate of return. This is during the uh, accumulation stage or when you're working and saving money, so you're not taking any money out. Uh, with this first example, your good returns were in the beginning, 30%, 20%, then years 3 through 8 uh, returns were 10%, then year 9 was minus 20%, and year 10 was minus 30%. You see at the end, you end up with 154,764. And example 2 here, if we flip the returns, um, when put the negative returns at the beginning, so same returns, it's just a mirror image, so we flipped negative 30, negative 20, and then 10% rate of return years 3 through 8, and then 20% and 30% on the back end, you end up with the same amount, 154764 So in this example, put money in, no withdrawals, the sequence or the order of returns makes no difference for you. End up with the same amount of money at the end. We'll see this is not a true uh, in retirement or the distribution phase. So if you start with $100,000, same return as before, 6%. Now we're taking 6000 out each year. And we have the same sequence as we went through in the last slides. You have the good returns at the beginning, 30%, then 20%, then 10% rate of return years 3 through 8, then minus 20 year 9, minus 30 year 10. Not terrible. You don't feel great, but you still have... 105,544, you still have a little bit more than you started with. If we now flip those rates of return with the negative ones in the beginning, negative 30, negative 20, 10% years 3 through 8, and then 20% year 9 and 30% year 10, you end up with just 38,898. Very different result in the distribution phase. It does make a difference um, the sequence of the returns, not just the average return, but the sequence of returns. So you end up with over $60,000 less. This is just the pure numbers. This doesn't take into consideration the emotional risk um, that we talked about before and the emotional investing. Most likely, as your account started going down from the principal amount, the original amount, you probably would have stopped taking money out. And guess what? Then you're your retirement lifestyle is not what you planned it to be. Sequence of returns, risk, realities, and solutions. Um, you get to pick where you, sometimes you get to pick where you get to retire, you know, the house you live in or maybe the part of the country. You don't get to pick the market you retire into. It's just based on when you're born, when you retire. Um, so knowing this, we know large losses in early retirement may not be able to be reversed. Market volatility is going to continue. Bull markets don't last forever. The risk is always there for a down cycle. Um, retiree soon money can be in danger. Uh, we're going to use the adaptive system protect um, along with bucket planning um, to really minimize and mitigate your sequence of returns risk in your plan. We'll pause now for a self-assessment. So uh, what's your exposure to sequence of returns risks? Uh, give yourself a one through three uh, on your true holistic scorecard. Uh, if you still don't completely understand sequence of returns risks, give yourself a four through six if you understand the sequence of returns risks but don't know how much exposure I have to it. Give yourself a seven through nine uh, if you don't anticipate needing uh, much income off of your assets, um, but you aren't really sure or concerned about sequence of returns risks, 
give yourself a 10 through 12 if you're confident that your financial plan has been designed um, uh, to uh, account for sequence of returns risks. So give yourself about 20 seconds to complete that assessment. All right, the other area of important planning is that what uh, that planning that would be done by a tax professional could be a CPA, an enrolled agent, another tax advisor. So we've got some different areas of planning here: tax management while working, tax planning in retirement, uh, Roth IRA conversions and planning, affordable care, tax subsidy planning, tax efficient estate planning, or charitable planning. So tax management while working, um, there's only so much you can do to just manage your taxes while you're working. We'll see in retirement you have some more options. So you need to determine if you're itemized or standard. Um, HSAs may be an option for a deduction. Charitable contributions are available. Education accounts such as Coverdale's 529 plans are available. Tax credits for education expenses if someone's in college, you or your children. And then deciding on if you should make traditional IRA or 401k contributions or Roth IRA or Roth 401k contributions. Nope, you're not going to file your taxes on a postcard like Trump was talking about. Um, they did make some things simpler, but you still uh, need to do some, some management and planning. So tax planning 1.0 in retirement. So I mentioned you have a little bit more control in retirement. This is what the most basic retirement uh, tax planning that people do. Um, you'll see on the next slide we do a little bit more advanced planning. So again, itemize your standard, uh, set up a tax efficient retirement account distribution strategy, and then maybe look at Roth IRA conversion options. Tax planning in retirement 2.0. So this is what we do at Client First for our planning clients. Again, we're going to cover the basics, itemize your standard, uh, health savings accounts, possibly Medicare savings accounts. We're going to take a more detailed look at charitable contributions, um, such as qualified charitable distributions from IRAs, donating appreciated assets, and donor advised funds. Tax efficient retirement account distribution strategy is important as always. And then we'll look at if there's advanced Roth IRA con conversion opportunities. Help you if you're under 65 and you're on a health insurance plan um, with the Affordable Care Act, you may have substantial tax subsidies. Um, we've helped many people with over getting over $10,000 per year um, per couple to help pay for their health insurance. Tax planning for people who pay zero taxes. Um, you know, I'll run into people periodically that say they pay zero taxes so they don't need any tax planning. That's normally a blue light special in my mind that they could do some planning. Net unrealized appreciation is a specialized planning for uh, company stock inside of a 401k plan. Paying 0% tax on certain long-term capital gains if you're still in the 12% bracket. There's an opportunity sometimes for this. And then required minimum distribution tax planning as well. Some fun tax planning um, facts and ideas for you to just keep in mind. Um, the 12% bracket right now um, goes up to 78950 of taxable income for 2019. Um, when you combine this with a standard deduction, if both spouses are over 65, that means you could have adjusted gross income of 105950 The standard deduction, like I mentioned, is 27000 if you're both above 65. And if you're both under 65, it's 24400 Roth IRAs could be a bad idea. They've gotten a lot of great um, reviews, um, but they aren't right for everyone. It depends on your situation. It's not one size fits all. 
Social Security is always less taxable than IRAs and other pensions, other income sources. For example, Wisconsin does not tax Social Security, and federal um, does a formula to determine how much is taxable. Currently, the maximum amount taxable is 85%. Not 85% tax, 85 of it maximum. In some cases, none of it's taxable federally. Just remember that taxes are an expense, so if we can save you anything there, it just supports your cash flow and retirement plan. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is the biggest tax reform in over 30 years. As a reminder, if they don't do anything to change it, it sunsets on December 31st, 2025. So you have a window of opportunity to do some planning between now and then. All right, next self-assessment, proactive income tax planning. Um, so in your situation, give yourself a one through three. If April 15th is panic time and taxes are just, you're just happy to get them done on time, give yourself a four through six if you generally understand taxes, but you know there's things you don't know. And give yourself a seven through nine if you use a tax preparer, but they don't really give you any proactive planning advice. And give yourself a 10 through 12 if you work with a tax planning professional uh, and they show you how to save money in taxes now and in the future. Give you about 20 seconds to complete that evaluation. Okay. Life insurance agent. Uh, so when we talk about life insurance, there's generally two stages of life. You have your working years where you have a large amount of term insurance when you have a family, large mortgage. Then in retirement, you generally just need a small final expense policy. Uh, if you have an agent or advisor say life insurance is a great investment as an alternative to IRAs, I would be very cautious. It rarely works out the way you, they're pitching it to be. Uh, Long-term care insurance, you basically have three strategies. Um, you can self-insure by traditional long-term care insurance. Um, however, they've had large rate increases um, basically since the beginning. You can also do a life and annuity-linked long-term care insurance um, plan. Things to keep in mind, is there a history of dementia um, in your family? Dementia claims for long-term care are much longer, on average about seven years, where non-dementia claims are about nine months on average. Um, so you have to take in consideration your family health history there. Um, and then remember, most of the time people receive care in their home, it's not just about going to a nursing home. Um, and don't let your plan be the plan as the cartoon is on the right. Uh, don't just plan on moving in with your kids. That's not a good plan. Health insurance. So this affects everyone. Um, individual health insurance before 65. If you retire before 65, you may need a market uh, marketplace plan. It could be on or off the exchange. If it's on exchange, you could look at a tax subsidy, which could be a tax planning opportunity to get you help. I mentioned over $10,000 potentially per couple to help pay for your insurance. Christian share plans are an insurance-like option, and um, they're an alternative. They're not traditional health insurance. My family is on uh, a Christian share plan. Um, they're definitely a viable option for many, many families. Uh, and then analyzing your retiree plan, um, if you're able to stay on there for um, uh, a period of time. You always want to look at that. Not always an option, but you definitely want to take a look. Then looking at the different Medicare options, so understanding Medicare Part A and Part B, Part C Advantage plans, Part D Prescription Drug plans, and then Supplement plans. <clears throat> so we help clients every day educate themselves on the Medicare options and then help pick plans that make most sense in their situation. Auto and home insurance agent. Um, so we have... Um, 
an insurance specialist in our office who provides comprehensive insurance audits and reviews um, to make sure you're covered correctly and then looks at about 40 different companies um, for coverage options. Important to be covered correctly and not overpay for your coverage. All right, next self-assessment uh, on your True Holistic Scorecard. Healthcare expense funding and planning. We'll also just use you know, general insurance for this because we covered it a couple different insurances. So give yourself a one through three. If you don't know what your insurance or healthcare costs would be um, and you know there's major gaps, give yourself a four through six. If you have health insurance and other coverage um, and Medicare, but you're not sure if you've saved enough or if you have the right plans, Give yourself a seven through nine if you have enough savings to cover the basics, um, but you don't have a plan for long-term care or any home health care costs. And give yourself a 10 through 12 if your um, plan accounts for health care costs, you have sufficient income and assets to cover um, your current needs um, for long-term care and future needs. Give yourself about 20 seconds to complete that. Our final professional that you'll need help from is an estate planning attorney. Uh, most people, similar to life insurance, you have two stages of life. You have that stage where you have a young family and children. That's where powers of attorney and the guardianship are going to be your most important uh, documents. And then once you retire, kids are out of the house, then you generally have more of an asset distribution plan. Uh, so what are all these different documents and which ones do you need? Wills and trusts, powers of attorney, financial and health care, guardianship, TOD, transfer on death, payable upon death, POD. Um, what is probate and why would you want to avoid it? Uh, how to properly set up your beneficiary designations for life insurance and IRAs, um, which go outside a will or trust in most cases. Uh, and then setting up a tax efficient estate planning. This is not done by an estate planning attorney. That's done in, this is done in conjunction with a financial planner. Um, such as myself or another planner at our firm. Um, so this is one of the areas where I see uh, oftentimes mistakes where they list, a, someone lists a church or charity in their estate plan, in their will or trust, where it should be listed um, elsewhere, maybe an IRA, something like that. So tax efficient estate planning, you want to avoid probate. <clears throat> and that probate just normally leads to extra cost and uh, extra time, spending accounts in the correct tax sequence, so leaving the funds that are most tax efficient, and then charitable beneficiary designations, setting those up correctly. All right, take a minute to self-assess your estate planning that you've set up, so your legacy planning and uh, documented organization. Give yourself a one through three. Uh, if you die tomorrow, and your family would have no idea how to settle your affairs and it's just a mess. Give yourself a four through six. If you think your things are in good order, um, but you don't know how thorough um, everything's been gone through by your advisors. Give yourself a seven through nine. If you're fairly organized, your affairs are in good order. Um, but your family still doesn't quite know how things are set up and they might be stressed out to figure it out. And then give yourself a 10 through 12. If everything is organized, documented, um, there's a clear map, your powers of attorney, your executors, your trustees, they know where all the documents are and what their roles are. Give you about 20 seconds to complete that.
All right, <clears throat> so this is kind of a capstone. So we've set up the true holistic process for our clients, um, you know, to really relieve your anxiety, help you put all the pieces of your plan together. Um, if it be uh, retirement planning, investments, insurance, estate planning, health insurance, Medicare, etc., cetera. Uh, we put together a team here to support you. Um, so we're here to help. And again, we act as a fiduciary. So our last self-assessment here is kind of a um, capstone, peace of mind. Uh, how do you feel about everything after going through all these um, areas of planning? Um, so what's your peace of mind? Uh, give yourself a one through three. Um, if you're worried that you don't have enough money to last through retirement or survive a market downturn, give yourself a four through six. Uh, if you think you've probably saved enough to last in retirement, but you're not sure if you have enough for your spouse or your family, give yourself a seven through nine. If you've saved enough money to provide for your lifetime, but there's still some loose ends you need to tie up. And give yourself a 10 through 12 if you have complete confidence um, that all aspects of your financial insurance, tax, and estate planning are uh, set up uh, to provide for you and your family and um, everything is all in good order. Give you about 20 seconds on that one. All right, thank you again for taking the time uh, to view this video. Um, uh, we like to provide these as an educational resource for those who aren't available to make it to the physical lunch and learn. Uh, and then again, as a review, um, uh, next month topic. So you, I'll kind of review the, the rest of the year here. here uh, September, I have a flex topic. I'll go through that in a minute. October 16th is our quarterly markets insight with david zarling november 20th is estate planning with attorney rob Melick, and december 18th is our christmas open house next month i have kind of a flex topic that i threw in there because i didn't know what were going to be the developments during this year so i put in there taxes medicare and insurance <clears throat> i believe it's going to mostly focus on tax updates some of the, the laws that are out there and kind of pending um, but then we'll touch on Medicare and the Affordable Care Act as well. So that's going to be me next month. Um, that one is on Wednesday, September 18th. Again, if you're not able to make it, we'll, gen we'll uh, create a video like this as well. And then some updates on our team. Uh, so again, as we continue to improve the true holistic process, that means more people to help our team uh, as we grow and add clients, and uh, we continue to service our clients. So we have uh, Kylie. Um, she's going to be graduating from UW-Whitewater uh, uh, in January, and she's going to be part of our financial planning team. Um, she's uh, been with us for the last two summers and is an intern. Um, she's done a lot of different re um, roles in the firm. Uh, recently, she's been helping me with family estate organizers. Uh, Ian is a CMT, a Chartered Market Technician, um, so that's the same certifications as David Zarling. So he actually lives in Was near Washington, D.C. Um, he's uh, in, on our investment team as an investment al analyst. He helps uh, Dave day-to-day uh, -day with doing research. And then uh, Donnie, um, he is originally from Texas. Uh, lives in Cedarburg, uh, has a young family. Uh, so he has a background in uh, uh, the banking industry, uh, helping customers one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So he's going to be joining our financial planning team as well, uh, assisting me in putting together plans for clients. So we're really excited to have these new team members. Um, we know um, our clients will really appreciate the extra help uh, that they're going to bring to them. Uh, I, again, if you're not currently a client, um, we do offer a free initial consultation. Um, 
And the way that works is you come in, um, we ask you to bring some basic information along, some documents, um, some information about your situation, and there's never a fee for that. Um, it's just an opportunity for you to ask questions on our firm and about um, our planning processes, and then it's an opportunity for us to assess what type of planning you need to do, and then we let you know what the costs are to put together a plan. So we're not a high-pressure firm. Um, <clears throat> we like doing these educational events and then just providing you the resources and letting you know how we can help. So if you'd like to set up an initial consultation, you can uh, uh, call our office, 262-335-1700, talk to Sarah or any of our other team members, and they can help set that up. Thanks again, and uh, look for information on next month's Lunch and Learn.